Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode. Actually, this is episode five of the Slapshot podcast. It's all about the Pittsburgh Penguins. And uh, it's sponsored by uh, Original Sports Podcast with Mark Meriday. It's kind of a like side thing for me. But it's not just about me. It's about my friend Jessica Kirchner, who seems to have some of that inside on what's going on at that Penguin arena on a regular basis. Jess, how's the world treating you today? It's good. How are you? Oh, I'm doing well. How can I not be happy? The sun's shining. It's a, a Friday afternoon in the fall. Uh, you know, I, this is my fa- one of my favorite times of the year. I'm good with spring, summer, fall, winter. I don't need it. <laughs> if we could skip winter, I'd be good to go. <laughs> right. Yeah. The, I, let me rephrase that. Winter weather. Yep. How about that? There you go. <laughs> Because my favorite, my favorite sports played in the winter. To be quite honest with you, I love me some right. hockey. <laughs> me too. Speaking of some hockey, Jess, longest tenured trio in any professional sport. Yes, I I know a lot of people were really hoping we were going to move on from Malkin and Latang, and I cannot tell you how happy I am that we did not. And I, you know, everybody wants to talk about how that. The 10 years is a little long, but, you know, in three or four years, it's not going to really matter. We're in that win now mold. We need the boys now. And you just, you're not going to find a much better trio than what we have. I'm like 150% with you there. Not even a hundred percent. I, you know, th- there's no way they were going to replace Latang <laughs> or Malkin with guys of the same quality. Nope. No way. There was nobody. There was actually nobody in free agency that was going to do what those guys get done for the Penguins. No, I, absolutely not. And like you said, you know, yeah, three, four years from now, we're going to be like, ah, you know. But I honestly believe that the salary cap is going to be high enough in three or four years from now that their big hit that it looks like now, it's not going to feel like much in like three or four years. And the Pens are going to be able to move in another direction and get some young blood back in there. Plus, they're saving these number one picks and things of that nature. So who knows how all that will end up playing out for them. Yeah, it it looks good. Like I said, I was really I was really excited. I couldn't believe Hextall was able to do it. Um, not with everybody that he had to sign in the offseason. So to see him to be able to get those boys for what he got him for, for the link that he did, I think is just, I, I think that was amazing. And, you know, Sidney Crosby said we may be older, but we're not old. And yeah. from that game last night, that trio, they looked so good on that ice. I still want to see that trio doing it, though, like five months from now, though. That's where it gets <laughs> a little c- cantankerous. So, you know, they, they need to be able to maintain that. And I'm not sure, I'm not sure how you approach that, but, you know, maybe – not putting all those minutes in early on and then you can ramp it up once you get to mid-season and things like that. I hope none of them. I hope they all earn all-star selections and none of them go. Like yeah, to give them that break. Yeah, you know, like, it just, it's it's a senseless weekend for them to be away where they could just be resting. Look, right, and I really thought maybe they would start out, maybe the first few games of the season, maybe they would start, especially Chris Latang. He eats so much of that ice time. Like, yeah. it's just, it's amazing the amount of minutes that he puts in. And I really thought maybe with some of the new acquisitions we've gotten, maybe they were going to back off of Latang's ice time. But once again, that final game, or that game yesterday, he's pulling in the highest TOI time. So, I was I so fun. I was really excited to see how... Um, like the level of work that they were putting in last night was not a normal first game of the season for that team. Again, so much so that Sid scored his first goal of the season last night, and that's the first time Sid's had the first goal in a season game ever, which Can't I thought was pretty, pretty, pretty amazing to me. I thought that was pretty amazing. You yes. Know. Yes, he scored in his first game playing. I get it, but he literally scored the first goal of the season. And, and I really uh, – I didn't think he was going to get it. I thought Zucker was going to get that first goal because uh, I really thought his was going in, but it didn't. So that was nice to see. Kit, you know, there's not many things that Sidney Crosby hasn't accomplished. So I guess this is just one more he can mark in his book of accomplishments. And to be honest with you, uh, the Arizona goalie, even though he gave up a trio really quick, five minutes into it or whatever, he actually played good. The Penguins had some mm-hmm. dead – I mean, they, they were in dangerous scoring zone. <laughs> Crosby, Gansel, even Zucker and Malkin, they all had pressured him 
a long time. Um, yes. You know, like he could have really caved on a lot of those shots, but he, he did a great job. I'm not sure about that team. I think that team's in the rebuild. I get it. Um, mm -hmm. We'll talk about that in a second. But how about those PK problems? I, I really, for a team in a rebuild playing against the Penguins, for the PK to give up two power play goals was a little bit unnerving to me. Yeah. I'm not sure. I'm not sure about special teams. Um, the P our PP was looking better. I thought the PK was pretty strong. I don't know if maybe Teddy being out is having an, you know, is, is causing an issue for our PK. Uh, Cause I know he's a, uh, you know, he's pretty needed in those situations. So I'm just, I'm not real sure. I don't know what's going on with it. One I, moment I think we're doing okay. And maybe we have found it and then kind of right back to where we started. I wouldn't have a problem with um I know they had Carter out there at one point on the PK, am mm -hmm. I right? I mm -hmm. wouldn't have a problem with them bumping Carter off the PK and just leaving Teddy replace him when he comes back because that's a younger body, that's a quicker mm -hmm. body, you know. And and I get it, Carter's a big guy and he spans a, a lot of range there. I mean, I understand the whole concept of why he's out there. Plus, that's his, you know, he's he's great at that, but he is an older guy. And if you want to have him down the road no use you eating up minutes would we give up five power plays so you know yeah that's at least five minutes of pk time for him right yeah um, how about the physicality as we got on in that game last night i thought the physicality by uh the coyotes ratcheted up and i thought the penguins matched it um, I don't know if I necessarily want to see Sid and Gino in that position. I, I know the one check that Latang had along the boards, it was as clean mm -hmm. as it could get, and he knocked the snot out of that guy. Um, he sure did. It was, it was a beautiful hit, and the guy knew it. The guy went flying, got up, went to the bench. He was like, shit. You know, it was like, wow. But I, yeah. I, don't, know, I, I don't know if I really want those guys getting into that kind of turmoil. Um uh, all season to be honest with you again you said it they're older yeah they're older uh um, yeah you know they've got to be a little more strategic about that but i was impressed with arizona's fight mm -hmm. yeah they had that never die attitude for sure like they weren't going to just roll over and let the penguins win they just weren't going to do it you know they made us fight for everything i think dumo took two a uh, shot to the hand and a shot to the arm last night. Um, Petrie took a shot to the foot last night. I mean, they were definitely have they were having to get in Arizona's way. So Arizona's just not going to roll over, you know, and, and give it to the boys. But uh, it was a pretty hard fought game on both ends. I think maybe the score doesn't reflect it as much, but it it wasn't a, it wasn't a super easy win for us for sure. Like they made us know that that we played them last night. Right, and it, it's a little it's a little trip down the road before we actually mm -hmm. encounter them again. Um, they may be a better team next time the Pens play them, and it, it'll be in that in that high school auditorium next time they play them. <laughs> yeah. Have yeah. you heard what Have you heard what tickets are going for for their games? Um, I haven't, but they they've almost sold out, haven't they? Yeah, but the, well, it's because it's a very closed. It's like. It's not more than maybe, maybe 10,000, maybe, okay. you know, uh, tickets are like anywhere from 500 to a thousand bucks. Like wow. it's, 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 you know, while, while they get that all sorted out in Arizona, um, if you're a hockey fan, you're going to pay to pay to see the hockey play it out there. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Sounds like wow. uh, your impressions of the new guys. Uh, my guy last night without a doubt was Jeff Petrie who they now call mm -hmm. JP. Mm -hmm. uh, Sid presented him with the with the Viking helmet, which kind of pumped me up. And, yes. um, you know, he, he did exactly what he had done for years up in Edmonton and what he did, you know, a little bit of in Montreal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I thought Petrie looked good. Um, I know people were kind of concerned. You know, he's on the older side. Um, his game had kind of laxed off a little bit in Montreal. But – when Martin St. Louis took over, Petrie kind of got his game back. He kind of got to that player that he was before. So I'm hoping that that carries over over here with with the Penguins. Um, I thought he looked good last night. He, you know, really wasn't showing his age. Um, I, I thought, and I hate to say it, but I thought Josh Archibald looked pretty good last night. I'm not a huge Archibald fan. I wasn't a huge fan of him when we had him the first time. 
but he led the team with four hits last night. And I that's what we that. Yeah. And that's what we need those guys, especially on that, that bottom line. That's what we need them to do. You know, we need them to kind of deal out those hits because like you said, we don't want to see F. Giddy Mouth and Sidney Crosby or Crystal Tang having to do that. So um <clears throat> I think Ruta looked pretty good. Um Ruta looked real good last night. Yeah. What a perfect he, pairing. Yes. Um, I was hoping to get a little bit more from P.O., but I know sometimes it takes him a, you know, a, a game or two to adjust. So maybe playing with Ruta will help bring that out. Um, P.O. doesn't have the body like Ruta does, but he has that long reach. So I'm hoping, you know, to see a little bit more from that duo. Not that they looked bad last night, but you always just want to see a little bit more. Ruta definitely stood out when he played. I, I felt like he stood out when he played. I know they were trying to get a mismatch on the line against him and Joseph. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I think you're right. I there's two, I have two thoughts on Joseph, though. Uh, number one is um, they're showcasing him. It's, it's, it's part of my thinking. And only because, only because Ty Smith is ready to come back up. They can always bring up Friedman again. Um, I think they're showcasing him. You know, uh, I, I hope I hope I'm wrong. I really right. hope I'm wrong. I hope it's Pedersen that gets moved and not and not P.O. Joseph because mm -hmm. Joseph is young and he's more skilled than Pedersen. He does everything right. Pedersen does, but he's more skilled than him. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, my my second thought is uh, Pedersen was playing tentatively. I felt like he was playing tentatively because he didn't want to make a mistake and get exposed yeah he's being very cautious in his play right now for you sure know, and that's not that's not his style of game you know if you ever saw him play at wilkes Bear scranton he was always an aggressive guy he always logged those big minutes you mm -hmm. know he he was he, he looked very strong on the ice with wilkes Bear scranton now i'm not sure what the expectation is there in pittsburgh but you know with with those guys that they have up including Rue Weedle being part of that. You've got seven sitting there and you've got two that you sent down. Inevitably, someone's something has to happen along the way. Yeah. What, I do, what I don't want to see is injury dictate that, but at least if injury dictates that, we're in a much, much better space than we've been in a long, long time. Yes, absolutely. That farm, our farm team was, we, which you have to give it up, I understand, <clears throat> to win, to win the back-to-back -back cups that we did. I get it, but... It's been a long time trying to get players replaced now down there, not just for the baby pins, but to have players that were ready to go when we needed them because injuries are going to happen. And for the Penguins, they happen a lot. So it's very almost comforting to know, like you can almost take a relaxing breath when you see someone on the big squad get hurt, knowing that we've got someone down there in the baby pins that can come up and fill that position. Um, I kind of feel like, to a certain degree, even uh, just backpacking off of what you said here or tagging along with what you said, I kind of feel like they're a lot younger down there now than what they have been. Yes. And I, I feel like there was a long time after, like, Rust and those guys came up, Sherry, <laughs> you know, that group of guys. Mm -hmm. I feel like the Penguins were just replacing that roster with veterans who could be put on two-way two -way contracts, but not... Mm -hmm productive veterans just guys who've been around the league playing two-way contracts um just to fill the roster maybe uh come up for a cup of coffee just because somebody goes down something like that but i really didn't feel like they were a productive team i'm very excited to see how they play this year uh i just my the hockey organization that i'm part of uh my son plays in i just organized a trip to to Hershey to see the Hershey Bears play the Wilkes, uh, Wilkes Bear Scranton Penguins uh, December fourth, so it will be interesting. They'll be into the season six weeks or whatever, two months, and uh, it should be pretty interesting to see how they are playing by them and who's yes. there, who's, yes. who's going to be there. You know? <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yeah, it's it's nice to see us growing players now instead of just you know picking them and throwing them. It's it's nice to see some growth happening down there. Yep. And then, you know, I don't think Hextall is going to sell any number one draft picks away. We should be getting to the point now where we have all our draft picks because we've given so many away throughout the course of time under under the former GM. You know? Agreed. Agreed. 
So, uh, yeah, you know, uh, another thing that I, I meant to say this, another thing that was really, really nice to see last night was Kapanen's goal. Oh, my um, gosh. I cheered so loud for that. Me too. When me he too. finally, I was like, <laughs> finally, Kapi, thank you. I was so excited for him. And you could just see the relief on his face when he scored goal number six. When he scored that sixth goal for the team, you just you just saw it. It was amazing. You uh, – I don't know what feed you got to listen to, but they were talking about how Sullivan really, really likes Kapanen and how Kapanen mm -hmm. puts so much pressure on himself. He works hard. He puts a lot of pressure on himself. And that's why they stuck by him, gave him a two-year deal. Mm -hmm. And um, putting him on the PK, I think, is going to help his overall game because he's going to be more... He's going to have to focus and be more in the flow of the game. He can't just sit back while we're on the PK or even the power play. He gets minutes on that from time to time. Uh, you know, he's going to have to be in focus for an entire game, and I think that will help him o overall. Yeah, they definitely need to keep uh, Cappy's legs hot. Like, they don't need to just let him sit there. If he's going to be on that third line, it is what it is. I think the third line is a good line for him. I don't think it puts... A tremendous amount of pressure but just enough for him to keep going but i think him on that peak that pk every once in a while on the pp is what they need to do they need to keep his legs hot yeah i would definitely agree with you uh going into tomorrow night they've got tampa bay um what do you what are you thinking do you go to smith right away with tampa bay or do you stick with jory for you know a handful of games before you start making some changes so I stick with Jars um, just because the more games Jari plays, the better he does. Does Smith, we're pretty lucky. Does uh, Casey can, you know, he could sit out seven, eight games, come in, play a game and do, you know, fairly well and right. then sit out another six, seven games. Jari does better if he's playing multiple games, one after the other. So I 100% stick with Jari. I have no doubt Tampa will go with Valsaleski. Um, but I watched that Ranger Tampa game the other night and Tampa was sloppy. Um, I'm not sure if they were just getting, you know, anybody gets frustrated with the Rangers play, but they, they were extremely frustrated and they just looked sloppy. So I guess, I guess we'll see. I guess the irony, the irony behind Tampa and the Rangers is the fact that they're both kind of in celery cap hell. Yes. And, and um, I do look for the Rangers to take a step back from where they were last year. And I definitely look mm -hmm. for, I do, now Tampa's aging too. They're not going to be, you know, mm -hmm. they, they reminded me last year of the Penguins in their prime. And then they started to show their wares as things yes. had gone on. Now they're notorious for manipulating the cap, as everybody very well knows, especially the Kucherov situation from a couple years ago. But I don't mm -hmm. know how this season is going to play out with them. Stamkos is up there in years now, and mm -hmm. he's always had the injury bug. You know, Kucherov right. seems to have the injury bug. And mm -hmm. Vasilevsky, he really, he has not had any injuries. But, again, we're talking about a guy who's been around for a while, played a ton of games. and you know, you know, I guess at some point his body's going to start showing the wares too. So it will be interesting, you know. And again, they moved on from a couple of defensemen. Don't forget. Yeah, we've yeah. got one of them, Jan Ruda. So yeah, yeah, and you know what? Uh, quietly, guys like Jan Ruda, he reminds me of a guy that we would just bring in at the end, like a Ramsey. Uh, I hope I'm not <laughs> date. Hope I'm not dating myself with this, but like a Shell Samuelson, like a guy at the end of the season who's a stay-at-home veteran defenseman and uh, that's what jan ruder remind, reminds me of uh I, I just to me he's uh going to be around for a couple of years and he's pretty much going to be integral uh when a, when a guy goes down in the top two lines if they want to move him into that spot they can't because remember mm -hmm. he, he was playing with headman right you know yeah yeah absolutely i they could plug jan ruder probably in on any of those lines and him you know be a positive impact so Tampa tomorrow night, and then mm -hmm. we've only got one more game at home. 
That'll be against the Kings next Thursday. They go to Montreal on Monday. Montreal beat the Leafs. Um, according to what I read about that game, the referees had a, a pretty big impact in that game, which is not surprising to me. But um, uh, is that is that a payback game already for, for a guy like Petrie who was kind of like in, you know, kind of like, stuck at the bottom of the totem pole even though i get it they went to the stanley cup finals during covid year yeah that kind of stuff they caught a lot of people by surprise they cut lightning in a bottle you know uh court uh carry price you know he was on uh, standing on his head you know but is that kind of a retribution game for petrie right out of the gates there i think it has to be i think it or at least a show off you know type game i, I think we'll see some big hits from petrie i think He'll be extremely noticeable on that ice, and I'm hoping he has a really good game. You know, you you definitely never want to go up against your former team that kind of just sent you away like they did and underperformed. So I don't think that's in Petrie's nature. So I think I think he'll have a really good game. So that's it for for during the week next week, and then next weekend uh, they've got the Blue Jackets. Then they go on the road for four. But we'll definitely be talking most likely before that Blue Jackets game. Um, I'd like to connect after they play the Kings and see where they stand after after the first four games. So hopefully we can we can connect again next Friday. Um, I like not having a set day release in our show because there's just so much going on. The next week when they go on the road, they're in Edmonton, Calgary. And then they've got two days off in Vancouver and Seattle. And yes. then they come home for two days. And then they're home for one day. Then they go on the road again. You know, they're for, they're very, it looks like they're very heavy on the road early season. And, mm -hmm. you know, that's okay. Even looking at November, uh, they've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven games away. And one, two, three three, four, five, six at home, but still you're, you're one more away than you are at home. So hopefully, yeah. hopefully in terms of balancing itself out, they'll have more home games at the end of the season uh, yeah. to, to their benefit. And it, it'll allow a veteran team like the Penguins sleeping in their own beds at the end of the season as they're vying for a playoff spot, or if they've secured a playoff spot to get themselves prepared to make a nice long run, hopefully this year. Yes, that would be wonderful. <laughs> well, Jess, it was a great recap. Another great episode of Slapshot Podcast. Uh, I hope you have a great weekend. Enjoy the game against the Tampa Bay Lightning and against Montreal Monday. Uh, and like I said, hopefully we'll connect again next Friday to talk about those three games, which includes the, the Kings game as well. Sounds good. Looking forward to it. Hashtag LGP, Jess. <laughs> Absolutely. Let's go, Finn. Talk to you soon. Uh -huh.